Hi everybody, welcome to part two of the SLR Magic lens review. And in this part, we're gonna get technical with this lens. We're gonna take a look at some charts, uh, some more analytical images from this lens and see what it's really doing. Certainly in part one, it made some very pretty nice looking images, some nice lens flares. Lens is a little soft, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing if your complaint is your camera's too sharp. Nobody's ever happy, are they? Anyway, let's get to it. If you got some comments and thoughts, leave them down below. Be sure to check them out and let's get into this. So the first thing I took a look at with this lens is the culmination. Are the focus marks accurate? And surprisingly, for a lens that wasn't specifically set up for this camera body, yes, they were. From about 9 or 12 inches on out to, I don't know, I guess about 15 feet, I found that the markings on the lens versus a physical real-world measurement using an actual tape to the focal plane was accurate, or close enough. I think at one point it was off about 3 inches, but at that range you've got more than enough depth of field. There could have even been some testing error in there since I didn't repeat this test a dozen times. Good enough. Well, let's go on. Sharpness of this lens. Now, when I first tried to do this with a 12 millimeter lens on the camera to fill the frame with my uh, eight and a half by 11 printed sheet, it, it was simply ridiculous. I was literally had the lens maybe six inches away from the paper. I mean, I shot the tests just to do it, but the fall off, the curvature of the lens versus the distance of the subject away, it meant that wide open, the edges of the paper actually fell out of the depth of field because of the distances involved. So that totally didn't work. Instead, I just set up a couple of these paper charts at more reasonable distances and ran everything through. Uh, wide open, this lens definitely has a little bit of softness to it, but you know, nothing too crazy, nothing too bad, certainly seen worse. And once you start stopping it down to four or five, six, you got a lot more depth of field, you've got some forgiveness with the focus, and the sharpness is great. Being part of a cine lens set, this lens features a standardized 82mm filter thread on the front of the lens, standardized gear positions for both the focus and aperture. The overall build quality of this lens is quite good. It's all metal, it's got really well engraved, well marked markings. It doesn't have depth of field markings on the lens, which I find a little bit strange. It's slightly forgivable, but really depth of field markings should just be a standard thing that's given on lenses. So I hope these tests kind of give you an idea of what this lens looks like technically. It's sharpness, the focus roll off, the look of the bokeh. This lens is definitely a little bit on the soft side, but I don't necessarily mind that. In fact, that's not really a bad thing in a wide angle lens where all the detail that it's capturing could actually be visually a little bit overwhelming and for the codec a bit overwhelming because you have to compress all that super fine detail. Sometimes maybe having a wide angle lens that's just very slightly soft is okay. It's got a very interesting look of vintage yet still modern in terms of modern mechanics and lens coatings. It has me really kind of looking at some of my older lenses which look similar and asking myself, well, do I still want to deal with them? Do I still want to deal with the quirks of these old vintage lenses that can really be less than ideal when I can have a nice new clean modern lens mechanically that still gives me a nice blend of sharpness, really good micro contrast, good looking flares that show nice color, nice sun stars, the 13 blade aperture. So there's a lot to be said about looking at what I could essentially call new vintage lenses. They have a lot of characteristics of those old lenses that we love, but they have good mechanical handling. So that was my look at the SLR Magic 12mm lens. It's a wonderful, well-made cinema lens, and it's great for gimbal use, uh, particularly for its compact size. Leave your comments down below, let me know what you think, and see you soon.